Well, good morning. It is Sunday, and I achieved one of my sort of minor goals. The weather today is going to be really hot, and my teacher canceled all the lessons, but she asked if I would go up and ride Vinny around. You know, just hack him around. That's perfect. It's not the first time she's done that. It kind of shows me that the first time wasn't a freak. Uh, yeah, it wasn't a fluke. <laughs> Oops. That I can at least be trusted to do that. It feels like a win. It's, it's something I've been working towards and hoping towards and I get to do it today. So I'm, I'm really pretty delighted. I did find out that apparently my wife's boyfriend is moving all the horses back to the barn. Like he won't be at the other barn anymore, the place that I wasn't allowed to go, which I think is very strange. Uh, I'm, I'm dying to know more about that story. He certainly hasn't told his clients that he's moving. Whereas I was told by my wife early September they'd be moving. I don't know what the story is. It's more that, that limbo state feeling, that, that sort of, like I'm just swimming. I don't know anything concretely, and I do much better when I have concrete plans. A sense of what is, a sense of what's happening, it's something to look forward to, and I don't have any of that. I haven't had that for months. I still don't have a future point I can fixate on as when I get there, I will be fine. And I think that's a really important thing for people, that proverbial light at the end of the tunnel, something you can look towards and think, I just need to get there. People continually tell me that the only way to deal with this kind of breakup is to go through it. There's no shortcuts, you just have to do it. There's no way around, there's only through. It's easier to go through when you can see a light, when you can see an end point, when you can have some sense of, Am I halfway through? Am I past the middle? Am I on my way out? And there's no rule book. There's no way to know. I think when you start to take ownership of your life and your situation, maybe that's a turning point or, or, or maybe that is, a, that is progress. It's even hard to take ownership of the situation. I, I think I'm making little steps forward. I think I might actually rent a place, you know, so, so that is a step. I have a team of motorcycles behind me. Should I get out of their way? Let's say yes. The Pacific Savages. They seem nice. That's why we get out of the house, right? To have experiences like this. I did not know when I left the house that I would be passed by the Pacific Savages. I didn't even know they existed, but now I do. I will now pull in behind the Pacific Savages. Anyway, the limbo state is hard because you just float and you don't have a direction and you don't necessarily know how to move forward. At least that's been my experience, is, is it's been one of endurance. Enduring the unknowingness of it all and having the sense that the person that broke up with me is controlling everything. And I've had people, you know, smarter than me, people tell me, yeah, but she's not controlling everything. She wanted you to move out of the condo and you didn't do that and she wanted you to go to mediation right away and, and you didn't do that. I have exercised control or I have exercised my own will in this situation. And the weird thing about that is like, yeah, it, it's true. I, I have been willful, but it's made me feel weird. It's gone against the relationship dynamic, but maybe that's part of what's important for establishing your own identity separate from the relationship. If these are steps forward, they don't feel necessarily like steps forward. When you have the courage to do one of these things, you don't get the sense of like, oh yay, you know, your posture doesn't approve and you're not like, ooh, I, I didn't get divorced immediately when she wanted to. It, do <laughs> it doesn't feel like a victory. I think it falls in that category of, of there's, there's no prizes in this thing. There's only less pain. Even now I'm sitting here thinking, when will I know when she's leaving, when she's moving to Northern California? When, you know, when will I know? Like, I'm entitled to know. And I think part of the thing is, I feel entitled to know because I'm married to her, because we're still in a partnership. 
but she doesn't tell me anything. Part of the reason she doesn't tell me anything is her pet fear that I'm going to turn around and tell his ex-girlfriend. And I still don't understand what the deal with that is. I, it just feels like, a, you know, a convenient excuse because it's the only thing I've really done wrong. Um, she's just fixated on that like a like a dog on a tennis ball. Any sort of control she wants to exert, that will be the excuse because that's all, really all she has. What I'm looking towards now is the fact that he will be around the barn more. He's bringing his clients back to the barn. He's bringing horses to the barn. So down in my gut, it doesn't feel like he's leaving anytime soon. And I'm pissed that she hasn't let me know. I'm really annoyed at that, since so much of this breakup has been handled with no respect for me. I guess I shouldn't be surprised that this is falling in line with that. The difference now is that I'm pissed and I'm angry. I'm not going to be a victim. I might even be a little antagonistic because fuck him. Re really, that's why. Because he saw me the other day and he knew and he didn't have the decency or respect or courage or any of a number of those things to let me know what the future looks like. So if he's going to be that way towards me, what makes him deserving of my courtesy or grace? Nothing. So he doesn't get it. He's come to my side of the street now. And granted, they will like him more because he's bringing in horses and revenue and all that, but this is the same guy that just up and left in the fall for a better opportunity. And now he's back because that opportunity didn't go well because of his choices. And I shouldn't have to pay the price emotionally for that. So I'm not going to. Oh, hi. That was an awesome morning. Nice. So I got to hang out and I talked to my teacher for a while and we just sort of hung out and my mom called and I caught up with her and then the sun started to peek through the clouds a little and it was like, boom, the heat went on. And uh, yeah, so I got on Vinny and we rode for 40, 45 minutes. We walked and we rode and God, he just wanted to run again. It was really, really, really fun. And nobody else was in the arena. So it was just me and going where I wanted and setting whatever pace I wanted and it was wonderful. I imagine that's what it's like to have own your own horse. It's like, I will ride whenever I want and do whatever I want because it's my horse. I felt freedom and I felt trusted by people to do that. And then as I was done, other people came in and I'm so grateful for community. These folks probably have no idea how important it is to me right now just to have people I see with frequency who, who are nice to me, who I can be nice to, who just, who I can have positive interactions with because, because I don't have a whole lot of interactions these days. And any interactions I've had in the past few months with the most important person in my life have been really, really negative painful, hurtful, insulting, demeaning, emotionally confusing at times, not being sure if she's saying sweet things to me or manipulative things. It's been really hard. So I choose to believe that all the re interactions I'm having at the barn are genuine and real and sincere. And I just believe in those. And if I'm being fooled, whatever. But I just, I just believe in those people that they're, they're good, nice people. And it means a lot that, that they're nice to me. And, and it's, it, to put it into words, to say it verbally sounds really basic, but so many of the emotions in this kind of breakup, you do break it down to the basics. The basics of, I am alone. I am sad. I am scared about the future. I don't know what to do with my time. I don't feel like I have purpose. I worry that maybe I'm not good enough for anyone else. It plays on these pet fears, and with time and experience with other people, they will subside. I know that I'm a pretty good person, but when you get abandoned as harshly as I did, your brain looks for a reason why, and when it can't figure out a reason, it does kind of throw you under the bus and says, hey, maybe, maybe you just suck. You know, maybe you're not as good as you think you are. If you're not a super self-confident person, it can be really hard to fight your own brain and be like, no, I'm good. <laughs> I definitely have low days where I'm like, how is, how is that dressage trainer so much of a better person than me? I definitely think that. 
and I think I've said it a lot of times on here. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. That's what you've missed. <laughs> I'm grateful for the people at the barn. So, so grateful to feel like I have a place and to have the impulse supported that the more I put myself out there, the more welcomed I feel and accepted I feel. And God, I hope I'm reading the room right. Like, I hope I'm correct. I hope they're not all just like, why the hell does he keep showing up? I hope I'm adding value to the environment. And that's the self-esteem thing. I don't know if I am. Like, I honestly don't know if I'm the creepy guy or not. I don't think I'm the creepy guy, but what if I am? That's, I guess, that's why you have to do things with, with sincerity and with a good heart. I have, I have no motive here. I'm just, I'm just doing the things that I think will make me okay or make me feel okay. Okay, before I spiral into some paranoid self-doubt spiral, I'm gonna go. It's been a great morning and I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that I can carry this positivity forward and go into school and make a significant dent in the disaster that is my classroom and uh, feel okay about it because I'm a little concerned right now about my return to school and my ability to be as excellent as I've been. Like I need to bring the energy and the enthusiasm. I think a lot of that came from my life before. Like I was just so energized and enthusiastic about my life because I loved my life, because I loved my wife, because I loved where I lived, because I loved my situation and my ability to, to travel and, and, and the horse thing, like, like I loved, I loved my situation so, so much that I couldn't help but just project it. And I definitely don't love my situation as much. I don't have as much sort of joie de vivre, you know? Like I'm, I'm, my life is less happy. So where do you, if what you need to do is project happiness and, and just be that energetic, larger than life-ish character, where do you draw on that from if you can't draw from experience? That will be a lesson I need to learn in the next few weeks. How can I, I'm, I don't wanna be fake, so I wanna be absolutely sincere in my enthusiasm and my energy and my excitement. But if I don't, if I don't realistically have it at the same level now as I have in the past, wh what do you draw from? Do you, do you draw from past experience? But that's kind of like acting, right? You know, like if you need to cry, you need to think about the sad things that have happened in your life and then you can, you know, it'll help you cry on cue. I don't want to be an actor at school. I can do that and, and, you know, to some extent last spring I had to do that. I don't think I did it very well. I think a lot of people were very well aware that I was sad. <laughs> but I really want to start this school year with a new resolve of I basically need to hit the first day of school and be like, this class is awesome. I love teaching this. I love working with this stuff. I am excited to teach you to make cool stuff. Let's have an amazing year. I'm so, so excited. And I need it to be genuine. And I think I can pull it off. I just don't know how yet. I just don't know what to tap into to make it genuine. My want is genuine. I just don't know that my resources are genuine yet. It doesn't help that I have mediation the day before school starts. That kind of sucks. That <laughs> all this, all this stealing my resolve I'm gonna do and all this strengthening and everything can potentially be undone by having to sit in a room with my wife and talk about finances and tell her her offer is no good and potentially walking out of mediation. So I may be doing all that personal life crap and then all of a sudden being like, all right, let's start the school year. It's gonna be awesome. We shall see. All right, well, I managed to not keep this short. It is 10 minutes and 33 seconds from the barn to the show park because that's how long I've been recording this video talking to you. Uh, yay. I will see you later. Thanks for hanging out with me. I, I really appreciate having you around. So what is the lesson of today? Keep putting yourself out there. Uh, be genuine. Went to the barn, I got to ride, and that was fantastic. I went to the horse show, and I saw people, and that was that was great. You know, I, I like to see people ride. I like to watch other people ride and try and learn from that. And then afterwards, I just stayed and helped. I love to and, and, and need to 
feel useful right now. I took a load of horses back to the barn and, and really it was just, it was a nice, you know, sort of 12 minute ride each way with Matt, just talking about things, you know, talking about horses and travel to Europe to look at horses and, and different, you know, people at the barn. It was, it was lovely. And honestly, he, uh, the first thing he said when I got in the truck with him was, it's so nice to have you around. Awesome. What was probably a throwaway for him, <laughs> you know, just just something nice to say to somebody. Holy crap! It meant so much. It was just sort of like, thank you. <laughs> so you're probably like, okay, you big moosey, why are you tearful right now? Uh, because I got a text from my wife. Seriously, um, because she texted me three texts in rapid succession, basically saying. Um, we need to get together and itemize all the things in the house. Would I let her know when things are happening with the condo because she wants to be involved? <laughs> so yeah, so the onus is on me to to tell her to tell her everything that, that's going on. But yeah, she wants to know what's going on with the condo and she wants me to be telling her things, yet she has told me nothing about her life or her movement or her holiday travel plans or anything. But I'm supposed to be super communicative. In her texts, I should just read them, but but basically, it was saying, can we make a time this week for her to come in and, you know, for us to itemize everything in our place? And if I don't respond, she's just going to come in and do it. So, so it follows her pattern of saying something and then threatening. If she doesn't get her way, she's just going to effing do it. Which is so weird. The her of the past knows that I'm, I'm really nice and accommodating. To threaten me afterwards is just adding insult to injury. Like, of course we have to do this work. It, it's, it's a necessary part of breaking up. It's not gonna be fun, it's gonna be horrific, but it's necessary. And then she said something like, I really don't understand why you're ghosting me now. That, that statement, like that's one of the last things she said in the text, that was what fired me up and made me wanna like, boom, like, like text her back immediately or call her and be like, are you fucking kidding me? You don't know why I'm ghosting me? Really? And then just launch into like, what are you doing with your life? Are you moving? Why didn't you tell me he's coming back to the barn and bringing all his horses? Like, like, why don't you treat me with respect? All of these things, it just, it just fires it up and makes me want to launch. And instead I had to stop and like, breathe. And I will respond when I'm calm. I will respond when, when I'm able to respond in, in a civilized manner. Because I don't know who I'm talking to. It certainly doesn't feel like my wife and my best friend. I feel like it's somebody who's trying to push my buttons and, and make me react. And I resent that so, so much. Those, those little texts came in and just shot me in the heart and just made me feel like, ah! In the midst of that, <laughs> to have somebody tell me something kind, yeah. Yeah, that, that makes me get a little emotional because there are kind people. There are nice people. And I've, I've found a few who are nice to me. And I'm lucky. <laughs> It's a weird thing to juggle because these people who barely know me, they've known me for less of the, than the time that I've been broken up, really, are nice to me. And the people who's known me best for seven years isn't. And I'm the same person. I'm the same genuine person with the people at the barn that I am with my wife. Like, I'm, I'm a good person. I'm great. I mean, the fact that she and I are in the position that she and I are in is all her doing. It is. And the fact that she is being so disrespectful and unkind to me is all her doing also. I haven't been mean to her. At worst, I've been defensive of myself. I've watched out for myself. But I've never been mean or unkind or cruel. The worst I've done is not talk to her because I need space, because she hurts me. She hurt me at the outset, and any contact I have with her hurts. <laughs> and the fact that she can make herself a victim in this whole thing is astonishing, because she's not a victim. In no way is she a victim. She's the architect. Oh, maybe she's out of control because I haven't done exactly what she predicted I would do. But that's not my problem. That's not my doing. Pony! Jackie! 
who's happy to see me now. Mmm. Do you find this delicious? <laughs> yes, you do. Hold on a minute. I'm on my way home from the barn. I had a great day. It was super fun. Got back to the barn and helped unpack a bit and then we had ice pops and I think I will forever associate these like strawberry mango ice pops with the barn. They're fantastic. And then I hung out with some of my younger barn friends who couldn't believe that I didn't have Bitmoji set up on my new phone. So I set it up and they helped me create a new avatar. In the eyes of my barn friends, I look like some kind of greaser from the 50s with sunglasses and slick back hair. It's so funny, I just kind of feel, I feel okay and I feel validated when I'm there. And when I leave, I feel a little sad because, well, my life outside of the barn is a little bit sad. It's not like I'm returning home to somebody who's gonna be excited to see me. The barn is really good for me and, and it's excellent in the time that it exists. So when I'm there, it's good. And when I'm not there, I miss it and look forward to going back. So I guess that's ideal. I don't know how to respond to my wife. I mean, I, I think it's really just a matter of something I have to do to have her over and choose what things who gets and whatever. The problem is, it's not really about dividing up the stuff so much as all the unsaid things that could potentially come out. I think if we get into that territory, that's when things can explode. If I start bringing up the issue of him coming back to the barn, I think it could be very volatile. I don't think she's, I have no idea what, what her state is. Seeing her reminds me in person of what it used to be like in, in, in the days before she cheated on me and broke up with me. It reminds me of how I felt and it's as close as I will ever get to feeling like that again, being in her company, just feeling the interpersonal energy that we absolutely have. It's troubling, it's hard for me. It's so weird that the thought of seeing my wife can put me in such a funk. You know, the thought of her coming in and the thought of us dividing up our lives can set me off so much until fairly recently, she lit up my life. She made everything about my life good. The thought of seeing her was the happiest thing. Like I could do anything, like I could endure anything knowing that at the end of it, I was gonna see her and it would be so happy. Um, oh man, I think my nose is sunburned. And that's a really strange turn. I mean, I imagine that's something that everyone must go through. But how do people deal with that? I mean, I guess if, you, if your relationship slowly grew apart, it would be different because you would get used to the idea of not liking the person. But when you're, when you're blindsidedly broken up with, everything about it is weird. That it's that on to off thing. Ah, I just keep learning about all these new situations that people must deal with that I never really appreciated. You know, I never really thought about how hard it must be for people till I'm going through them myself. My experience has been just this feeling of, of being disorientated. My favorite person is now I'm not gonna say my least favorite person, but the person that brought me the most joy and calm and happiness and excitement and, and sense of place in the world, um, now does none of those things. It now causes me anxiety and fear and causes me to be negative because I don't think I can trust her. God, what a change. And I think about conversations we've had where she becomes the victim and it's, you know, she's suffering too and this and that. And, and, and the umbrella over the whole thing, the whole overarching story is she did it. All of this, all of everything is her doing. So any suffering she's doing doesn't matter because she created it. Any issues she has with me and how I'm behaving don't matter because she did it. I'm only acting the way I am because she cheated on me and betrayed me and broke up with me blindsidingly. And I'm doing the best I can to be okay. Okay in a life devoid of her, of that relationship, of love, trying to cope with betrayal and abandonment. So no, I, I won't I won't take being criticized anymore for for how I'm handling this really crappy situation. I don't want to be here in the first place, but I'm not gonna be criticized for how I'm handling it. I think I'm such a people pleaser or I think I'm so willing to to sacrifice for the relationship that I'm willing 
or have been willing to take a hit in the face of everything else. I can take a lot emotionally. I've, I've, I've spent a long time practicing that. And I think emotionally I'm pretty strong and resilient more so than she is. And I think in that relationship, I was able to take a lot of things both from her and for her to make our relationship good. I'm practiced at it and I think the problem is I need to stop, but I'm used to doing it. It's not a natural thing to just stop that. So then it makes me look weak, whereas I'm just practiced.